Hey guys, Matt Bishop here. We are outside. It's actually a pretty nice night for February. We're outside here at the Starland Ballroom up in North Jersey, and I am here with one of the best young guitarists in heavy metal. Dude, I, I don't hesitate to say that. I'm not choking with you, man. Right. I'm here <laughs> with John Lau of Warbringer. Hey. Up, guys? Dude, I can't even I can't even say the band name normally. Like it, I get That's so good. amped That's up. Good. It's got to be yeah. like a Warbringer. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> so tell me about the name, dude. How did the name of the band come to be? Uh, you know, we were in my garage. Um, we were shooting around, uh, you know, a bunch of words, and we we knew War was a great prefix, and we just threw it against mm -hmm. every suffix, you know, like <laughs> you know, like War King or you know, I don't know, Warlord, or whatever. And Warbringer just kind of fit. It fit the attitude. It fit the, uh, fit the energy. And when we were kids, it was kind of more naive, you know, and it was like just about like running and gunning and mm -hmm. all that stupid stuff we talked about. But I think now, I mean, the name can even evolve. You know, maybe yeah. talking about like war against like fucking like a stupid civilization or like, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a cool name. I like it a lot. <laughs> well, I do too. And you guys just tore, you guys brought war to the Starland Ballroom, man. It was literally the first time I'd ever seen a circle pit in Here? this venue. I oh. swear to God. I'm not kidding you, man. Good. You guys really tore the house down. Yeah. Talk to me about playing live. You guys, we were talking off camera a little bit. You guys love to tour. You got a lot of tours coming up. We're going to get to that in a few minutes. But what do you guys try and bring to your live show? Um, you know, what attracts us to Thrash Model is the uh, energy that kind of transfers between the, the band and the audience. It's such like a, such like a fun, exciting style of music. You know, so it's really easy just to kind of get carried away by it. And. Uh, yeah, you know, there's just so much energy, and our performances are probably like the most important thing to us. We want to give everything to the audience. Um, you know, I mean, let's say we're playing a Spinal Tap gig, you know, and mm -hmm. it's kind of a bum turnout. We'll still give them the same show that we'd give, like, you know, someone on Bach, and we always give it our best. And uh, I think it really shows, and I think it's why the band's had longevity. I think it's why the band's developed, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Well, I listened to you guys on your albums, obviously, and this was my first time seeing you live, and it was a real treat. You guys really give me that vibe of you know, the old school thrash. You yeah. know, there's a lot of new styles today with the new metal and metal yeah. core, but you guys really seem old school in a lot of ways, you know, Metallica, Slayer, Exodus. And I know that you guys are from the Bay Area. Does that have a big influence on you guys? I mean, of course, uh, when I was 15, that's the only thing I gave a shit about. <laughs> you know, it was kind of weird, but there was a lot of kids that felt like that. Um, the coolest thing about the thrash thing is that you know, it belongs to the kids again. You know, you know, Exodus is a strong band still. Mm -hmm. Or Bandon got back together. I could name a couple other bands that are kind of still doing it and getting back together. And Megadeth is like doing very well. And, you know, a lot of those older thrash bands are doing well. And the reason why is because there's so many young kids coming to the shows. You know, when we play, we'll get some older heads. We'll get a lot of younger kids too. Yeah. All the kids have never got to grow up with those bands. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of interesting how like this newer generation is feeding back into an older style of music. And I think it's just because there was something something good about it, something right, you know? Yeah. And one of the, the lines that we walk tightly is that um, we're not trying to just copy Metallica or Slayer. And, it, and it's hard to convince people that we're doing that. And uh, we just, we try to make sure that the music sounds like original to us, enjoyable to us, creative, you know? And then uh, we started sharing it, we started playing shows, and a lot of people liked it too. So it's kind of the aim. Well, you guys are certainly keeping thrash alive and you are doing we're that metal though you know we're keeping yeah metal alive. we're playing metal like real metal that's 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 the bigger picture you uh, john actually said it tonight he said heavy fucking metal that's the bigger picture that's what we're playing yep you know we're trying to play fucking metal and you guys are doing that with your new album out on century media it's called worlds torn asunder yes walking into nightmares really put you guys on the map and talk to me about what your goals were writing this new album, the one that's out. You know, I mean, talking about Waking, um, we wrote that in two months. Um, and the band grew up so much from the road, we had so much experience. And uh, that's why we could put something out like that in two months, you know? And it's, it made a statement, like, yeah, we're playing Garage, but, you know, here's, here's some other ideas. You know, here, here's our sound. You know, we try to, like, own our own sound, own our own element. And with the third record, we took about, like, half a year off the road. And we went in with Steve Evitz, um, who is a work with Symphony X, who we're touring with. He's uh -huh. also worked with, you know, some some older metal bands like Immolation, M.O.D. He's also worked with uh, the Dillinger Escape Plan, um, you know, some some modern like kind of hardcore and some pop punk. And, and the reason we went with him isn't just because uh, we wanted to sell out or go mainstream. It's because he's a great producer and he gets big natural sounds. Mm -hmm. And, and we don't want a record that sounds like you know something that you like could dig up from a record shop, you know, in the 80s. We want yeah. a record that sounds like. Not modern, but big, you know, mm -hmm. powerful, huge, you know, like, you know, the same quality as anything else you could buy today. And, and, you know, so we spent a lot of time on the record. We tried to make everything really fucking heavy, really ambitious. 
you know, we slowed down some parts, we sped up some parts, and I'm really proud of the record. I think it's doing great. Yeah, I think it's an awesome album. Now, whether it be when you're writing or recording, playing live, who do you personally draw inspiration from as a guitar player? Oh, it's it's all over the map. Like I said, this is all I was doing when I was 15 and 16. But, um, <laughs> you know, I started growing up, and after kind of like working, you know, we've been touring for five years like this, nine months a year, and uh, spent so much time in a club, uh, the last thing you want to hear when you get in the car is a metal record, you know? Yeah. So I've kind of come full circle. I mean, I'm working a pixie shirt right now. <laughs> there you it know, is. I, I, I like a lot of rock and roll. I like a lot of like 80s goth or 80s pop. I don't know what the fuck. Um, I just like music, and I like a song that kind of like changes the way I feel, gets me excited, you know, and uh, mm. that's where I draw my inspiration from right now. What, what gets me excited, you know? If I'm playing something, if we're writing a song, if we don't feel excited about it, why are we gonna put it out? And that's 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 like kind of it's the true. guideline. That's a good point. Now, you guys said you guys got some big plans for touring. You're on tour right now, obviously, with Iced Earth and Symphony X. Great that's going to be going on for a while. Talk to me about the coming months, moving towards the summer and the rest of the year. Um, we're really stoked about the summer. Uh, we'll be going to Europe. We're going to be playing Vakken. Um, we'll be going to like, the Czech Republic. It's kind of an old castle. It's called Brutal Assault. And it's a great festival. Nice. Party Song, another German festival. And there's actually a lot. I can't even know. Uh, there's a festival we're playing in uh, Holland. And Bruce Springsteen's out, like he's the headliner. And Bjork's playing it too. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, and, and they're paying us, you know, to play somewhere on that bill. And like, God knows why, but it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, right? yeah. It's another it's show, a, man. It's a big rock festival. Metal's <laughs> almost mainstream in Europe, so we love playing in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna be there all summer, and then uh, we're gonna try to go to South America. And, uh, gotta keep that hush hush, but all right. Very exciting. Well, it gives everybody something to stick around for, something to stay tuned. Of course, yeah. The band's developing. Man. It's growing. It's good. Nice, man. Well, John, thank you so much for taking the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I implore you, Warbringer is one of the best new heavy metal bands out there right now. They are tearing it up on tour right now. They're going to be on tour for the rest of the year. Make sure you check them out. And in the meantime, Worlds Torn Asunder is out now on Century Media Records. So go get it and crank it up! You're good at that, man. Am I? Yeah, you should. You should do our plugs. Thanks. I would like to. <laughs> Can we arrange it? We'll arrange it. We're going to arrange yeah, it. You're a good hype, man. <laughs> Rock and roll! Crank it up, guys.